reference sequence, right? Let us suppose you want to uh, study some gene A from a particular genus or species, right? So, what you will do? You will take some uh, reference sequence for that. Uh, suppose uh, right now I have some example. I will just give you some example for one gene that is uh, RPB, RPOD, right? This is from Xanthomonas. So, for example, uh, we have some sequence Xanthomonas and we need to design a primer on that particular sequence. This is a gene name, this RP, RPOD and this is your genus. So, what you will do? Uh, you have to download your gene sequence from NCBI. All of you know how to uh, download a sequence from NCBI? Okay. Now, after downloading it, uh, it is always good to design the primer in the conserved region. So, that if there is some variability as per the species level or at the strain level, so that will be taken care. If you will be designing on single sequence, then because of some variability or change in the sequence, your primer may not be fit for other strain or species of that particular genus, right. So, it is always better you select some conserved region at least for designing of primers, right. So, what you can do? Uh, you can download one sequence, then you can go to NCBI and just do the blast, nucleotide blast of that particular sequence, right. So, let us suppose I have pasted that sequence in this blast, NCBI blast only. So, what this will do? Uh, this will give you uh, the hit or the identical uh, sequences for this particular gene, right. So, that may be from some different isolates or different stains or different species, but that will give you and show you how much identical that sequence with reference to your other hits, right. So, if you can just see, uh, you are getting a lots of it and almost all are around 98 percent similar, ok. So, what you can do? Maybe you can pick the initial uh, 10 entries let us suppose, ok. So, you download these from here to here or whatever is identical up to 99 or 100 percent or 98 means it should be uh, more than 95, ok. So, you download all those sequences. Uh, how many of you know how to multiple align the sequence? Okay. One is where. So, uh, for this thing what you have to do uh, to get the consensus sequence of all these 10 sequences. Consensus you all understand? You all understand that is conserved among all the 10 sequence, right. So, what you will do? You take all this 10 sequence, download it, put it in word format, right. So, you will be having from one base to another base, all similar sequences will be with you in one particular document. Now, you do the multiple alignment using any of the software, there are many software online available, freely available. So, you can try any of it. color code or some italics or the small case. So, it will be highlighted in that particular region. So, now you have to select the region that is conserved among all the 10 sequences, right. So, if that region is conserved, then now you can pick any of the sequence for primer designing. Because what was the purpose of doing the multiple alignment to get the consensus of around 10 to 15 sequences and now you are pretty sure that okay, whatever region you are choosing that is the conserved region, right. So, once that region is selected, let us suppose this is the sequence 
that we did the multiple alignment, we picked one particular sequence from all those entries. Now, there is one more software, these all are online available software, so I, uh, I am not telling about some licensed version or anything, you can use it with your normal net connection and all, all are online available. So, what you can do, this one software, you can write down, there are plenty, but I am just demonstrating using one particular software. You can write it down, this is Primer 3 plus software. So, now uh, the I have pasted that particular sequence. Now, there are this, there are many software that will give you all the things ready made. Otherwise, you can design it manually also. But the main thing is that you should know what are the primary features for designing any type of primers, right. The primer designing, there are few parameters. First is that the sequence of your primer, I am telling you the optimum only, right. The sequence of the, your primer, it should be optimum between 17 to 25 or 28 basis, first thing. Second thing is that it should be free from some like uh, uh, nucleotide stretches, like the homonucleotide, it should be free from that. Then the third thing is you have to take care of the GC content of that particular sequence, right. Then the fourth thing is your TM, the melting temperature of that particular primer, that also should be optimum. It should range between uh, 50 to 60, then your GC content, that also should range between like 40 to 60 or 70 GC, percent uh, GC, right. So, these are the certain criteria, whichever software you are using or maybe you are doing it manually, just take care of all these features and you will get a good set of primer, ok. So, you just please read out as a homework, you read out like what all are the features or the parameters that you have to consider before designing any type of primers, ok. So, now this is the ready made only, you do not have to do anything, this software will take care of all those parameters like what should be the optimum size of the primer, what should be the TM, what should be the GC content, whether uh, the uh, what what we will say the complementary sequences are present, because uh, that, that is also one main point that it should be free from any complementary sequence among that region, among that uh, 17 to 20 basis, because the reason is that if it will find some complementary sequence, it will make a loop and bind to itself. So, that will not be available for your amplicon to bind it, correct. So, there should not be any secondary structure or the hairpin loop type of structure. So, that is also you have to take care, if let us suppose some complementary structure is there, it is always better to select a, some, you avoid that region, select some other region from maybe from 5 prime end or 3 prime end, correct. So, uh, one more thing, uh, you have to design two primers, forward and reverse, right. Forward should be 5 prime to 3 prime. Reverse, it is also from 5 prime to 3 prime, but the only thing is, it should be reverse complementary to your sequence, right. Because uh, there, this is a general mistake which people make in the beginning. But uh, depending on their maybe experience, they will learn that thing. The primer, the forward primer that is on the sequence itself, uh, suppose can I have one paper or pencil something like that. Let us suppose uh, this is your sequence, right, 5 prime to 3 prime, ok. This is your primer, forward primer, correct this is your reverse primer, ok. So, while designing the primer, your forward will remain the sequence of your like the whatever sequence you are taking, but the reverse that will be the reverse complement of that particular region, ok. Please whenever you are sending the primers for synthesis, 
for synthesis the stretch will be going from the reverse complement of this region. This is for the reverse primer, forward can go ahead. So, you have to take care that what is the orientation of your gene or whatever sequence you are using for designing the primer. Please just take care otherwise you will not get any PCR amplicon. Then you must be struggling ki kya hua, kya nahi hua. So, you have to please take care of all these things, right. So, now uh, there are certain parameters here, what it will do, uh, we have to specify the region like suppose I have around 1 kb or 2 kb of a gene, right, this is the length of my gene, but I need to amplify just 800 to 1000 basis. So, what you have to feed in this software, you have to specify the range of your PCR amplicon. Right. Let us suppose they have given the range, various ranges they have given. So, you select according to your requirement. Let us suppose if it is something uh, real time primers, okay. there the size of amplicon you need hardly 150 to 200 basis. So, you can specify that particular region. Let us suppose you have to go for a, a longer stretches. PCR amplicon. So, you can select accordingly. Suppose, I will select 800 to 1000 basis. Okay. Now, the parameters what I told you that this software take care of all those parameters or the characteristics of primer design. So, the primer size here you can see it has given the minimum this and maximum this and optimum is 20. Right. Similar way the TM and the GC content that also it will take care. Okay. So, once you have specified the product size, now you can click on pick primers, correct. You just write down step wise otherwise uh, or you practice it a few people are having laptop right now. So, now what the software will do, it will give you uh, around 8 to 10 sets of different primers on this particular sequence, correct. So, now here because the sequence is 800, so what I will do, I will further reduce the region, so that you can just see it how it works. Now, what I am doing, I am reducing the region because the sequence which I had taken that is 100 on, 800 only. So, what I will do? I will reduce it further maybe around 3 to 400 basis. Now, you can see the, the highlighted region. So, this is your, this one is your forward primer, this is the sequence of your forward primer and this is the sequence of your reverse primer. So, what this software is doing uh, that reverse complement criteria, it is already considering itself and whatever sequence, reverse sequence is there that is already reverse complement of your sequence. Okay. Now, you do not have to convert it to reverse complement because this is the region that is already been reverse complement. If you compare with this particular region, this yellow highlighted region this sequence is actually the reverse complement of this yellow highlighted region. Understand? If any questions you can ask in between, right. So, now what it is showing? It is showing the length of your forward primer, the TM, the GC content and other criteria which I told like self dimerization is there or some loops are there. So, that also the some figure is given that is highlighting that. Then the second is your reverse primer, again it is giving everything. Then this is the amplicon size, this one. Okay. We highlighted that the region of our PCR amplicon, it should be the size should be between 300 to 400. So, it had given around 335 basis amplicon. Right. One more thing you have to take care, uh, the difference of TM should not be more than 5 degree between your forward and reverse sequence, 
right? That is also one major thing that play role in your uh, primer designing and that will affect in your PCR setup, PCR optimization, right? So, let us suppose the uh, TM of your forward primer is around 50. So, your reverse should be somewhere around like 50, 52, 53. It should not be like one is 50 and another is 60. What will happen in that case? One primer can bind easily to your template and another will not bind because the specificity for temperature is different for both the primers, right? So, this is also main thing that you have to take care while designing the primers. Now, uh, this software whatever it is giving the generally the top one. Now, it is having too many other sets also if you just go down just scroll down you will see there are other primers also. Now, this is your uh, pair 2 similarly pair 3 will be there pair 4 will be there. So, at different different regions it has now created the primers on the sequence which you had submitted to it, right. But generally we take the forward uh, be the sequence of the reverse make it on a separate like uh, some word document you generate put the gene name gene name underscore forward gene name underscore reverse just paste this sequence and now you can synthesize your oligos using this sequence correct now one more thing before that uh, it has although it has given some primer sequence but still we want to validate whether those primers are actually good enough in context of the secondary structure or the dimerization or the hairpin loop. So, what we you can do there is one another software that is also online oligo calculator. So, just to study the property of the oligo which you are designing right. So, what you can do you can copy the sequence of the forward primer. Once you will open this window will be there for you. So, you can paste your sequence sorry right you can paste your sequence and then you can do the self complementarity check right now there are certain things one is the hairpin loop formation you can see here it is saying none it means this primer is good enough there is no hairpin loop in this particular primer then the second is the 3 prime complementarity otherwise what it will do na it will fold and uh, bind to itself right so that also is not there self annealing site that is also none so you have to check each of your primer in this particular software to confirm that whatever the software has generated those primer those are good enough and you can take these for, uh, primers for the for your study right similar way you have to take for uh, reverse primer also and if something is there that will be highlighted over here right. Let us suppose if some structure will be there na that it will be highlighting uh, in the space of none it will be highlighting that structure right. So, you try to avoid that primer and design some other reverse let us suppose the forward is ok and with the reverse primer you are getting this problem. So, you can design another reverse primer or you can select whatever you have designed from the primer 3 plus you can select some other reverse primer and check the complementarity correct understood any questions
Any doubts are there? Please, you can ask me. Yeah, reverse what happens is, uh, let us suppose I am taking just, uh, there are two strands, let us suppose I am taking just one, right, for designing my primers. So, what I just told you that, that this is the sequence which I have taken, right, this is my 5 prime to 3 prime, right. So, the forward primer primer should be this way, right. One should from this, one another should be from this. So, this sequence as such it will pick, yes, yes. just the example which I had shown you here. Just see that this particular sequence, the forward sequence, it is coming originally as a 5 prime to 3 prime, but this is the orientation of your reverse primer, right. So, what will happen if you are giving this particular sequence in this orientation only? It will be 5 prime to 3 prime, but that will go towards that side, right? It will read towards that side. Now, on the another strand, this, this particular thing will bind, this will bind, right? So, your both strands are actually the uh, reverse, the complementary strand, but the for designing the primer, it should be complementary plus the reverse complementary. So, this will be the complementary and plus the direction is reverse, got it? It is complementary, all sequences are complementary. If it is complementary, then only it will bind, but same time it should be the reverse of that complementary strand. Then only it will sequence in this direction, right? So, you are, uh, uh, while you are doing the PCR amplification, so it will go like that and this will go like that, correct. So, the sequence you, which you will be sending for synthesis, that will be the reverse complementary of your actual sequence that you are taking to design the primer, right. You can see this particular thing you can see, uh, it is A C G. If you reverse complement this region, complement is just uh, C A G A A, right? But it is not like that. It is the reverse complement, like you have to read from this A. Ninety-five percent, it will work. Five percent is because of like some, let's suppose, uh, some specific regions are there in your, uh, because you have designed it using some reference sequence. Let's suppose you are using it for some specific sequences or from from other organism. Then maybe two three percent you will find problem. But otherwise, it will go very well if you are designing in this way. Correct. You can practice it uh, while going back, then only you will memorize, otherwise you will forget. You just write down the stepwise, the things whichever I told you and then you can practice it. If some other problem is there, then you can always come back and ask. Anything else? Yeah. Sorry? Huh? Protein, then you have to convert it back to the nucleotide sequence. No? You have to convert it back to the nucleotide sequence. No, you uh, using any other like uh, maybe on NCBI also some options are there where you can reverse trans translate that thing and then you will get, let us suppose you have a some protein sequence, convert it into nucleotide sequence, that sequence you can input here and 
that you can use for primary signing. Right? Any other? Huh? GC content is important because uh, the you all know that GC content that uh, binding is stronger than the AT, AT rich, right? So that will because uh, when it will be binding to your uh, sequence, it, it has to finally bind to your sequence. So that TM temperature that will go high if your GC content is more. So in that case, what will happen? Uh, let us suppose uh, you will be using some specific tags, if it is the journal tag then definitely if you will increase the TM of your particular PCR reaction then your sequence will be uh, the uh, your amplification will be compromised because uh, at that at certain temperature your activity of your tag that starts like uh, uh, deactivating at a higher temperature. So it is always better to go with the optimum range that is below 60 degree, otherwise you have to add some additives just to put a cushion like buffers or something, uh, suppose uh, you will be adding betaine, some people add, DMSO some people add. Let us suppose your sequence is too GC rich and you do not have any other option but to design primer on that particular region. You can go ahead with a higher GC content also, but in that case you have to add certain additives in your PCR reaction to take care of that higher range, right. Suppose betaine is there then uh, what else uh, uh, DMSO you people can add. So th what that uh, take care is now that create the environment so that the activity of the enzyme that is not affected by your higher temperature, right. Any, yeah. We are calculating in that another uh, oligo cal hmm. and we are getting that it, it is complementary or it is having some uh, hairpin loop or secondary structure. But it is a good primer for our sequence. But it is no, good means what? The first we are getting. Good that means that is what I am saying. Because uh, see, all softwares they ha they use different algorithms to generate the data, right? It is the algorithm based. So maybe that software. So that is the only thing that uh, you are validating it. Although it had given, hmm. that is what I was saying. That the first generally the first hit is. Uh, a good one that take care of everything that there is no hairpin loop, there is no self dimerization, there is no complementarity. So it take cares of that thing. But by chance, let us suppose if the sequence is not fit for that sequence, your input sequence that itself is like that and it is showing some dimerization, then it is better you select some other what you can that you can do manually also. Let us suppose uh, this is a particular region where your primer has been designed, this is the region, right. So you are getting self complementarity let us suppose at this area. So what you can do now, you can avoid this region and design the primer that manually also you can do. Just shift 4, 5 bases avoiding that particular region towards another side and you will get a good primer. points we are getting none and if one point we are getting something value that like we are getting actually the, see uh, that that also depends like uh, it, it it will give you some numbers also yeah, yeah. there like how big is that number let's suppose the whole sequence is complementary to each other whole sequence and if it is just a one or two basis it will work it will work, right? But let us suppose the whole primer, this is your uh, primer and this is your primer and it is showing complete complementary, then it is better to replace that. Because what will happen, na, the primer will bind to itself and that is not available for your PCR amplification, right? It will form the dimer type of thing, correct? How can we design different kind of primers? Means, for example, ITS, SSR, whatever it may be. Different type of primer. Ah, ma'am. Same thing. Uh, different type of primer means that depends. Let's suppose uh, 
you are saying that ITS region, okay. right? There the input sequence should be your ITS gene, right? Suppose you are planning to uh, design the primer for 16S, the bacterial identification. There your input should be your that particular gene. That depends on your requirement, right? Let us suppose you are going to design, uh, you have some gene um, like um, right now I had given you some example. For example, you have some topo 3 gene or uh, maybe some DNA gyrase gene is there. So, whatever gene you want to study, let us suppose you have to study a set of genes and for each gene you have to design a set of primer, right. Suppose, okay. Uh, I will just give you one example. Suppose I have around uh, 200, 2 kb long gene, A gene is there that is 2 kb long. I need to design the primers for a different, different region, got it? Suppose this is your 2 kb gene, this one, right? And you have to design the primers for around 800 bases or 700 bases that will cover up everything. So, what you will do? This is the one fragment, this is the another fragment, this is the another fragment. So, for this thing, you have to design a separate set of primer, although the gene is same, but the region you are studying that is a different region. So, you have to design three different sets of primer to cover the whole 2 kb. But let us suppose your gene or the your area which you want to study that is just around 500 bases. There are some genes those are very small. So, you can design let us suppose this is only 500, only one set is sufficient. Suppose you have uh, RT PCR requirement, it is only 100 to 200 bases of the amplicon, right. So, there whatever region you have that is your requirement whether you want to design for a 100 base pair the PCR amplicon or the region what you are interested. S suppose you have around 500 bases, but you are interested in initial 100 bases only, then no point in designing primer for the whole stretch. You just go for the 100 bases only, design one primer here, one primer here, maybe these are around 200 bases, that will be sufficient for you. So, that depends on your requirement. If you have 10 genes, so the input sequence will be one by one for all those 10 genes. For one gene, it will design one set. For if you are interested in uh, designing primer for a second gene, then the sequence which I have entered here, the input sequence, that will be the second gene. Got it? You got your answer? I have one more question. Ma yeah. Um, especially in ITS primers, we have both uh, forward and reverse primer. For example, we take ISS primers, so only the one sequence will be there. Man. Only means not like that forward and reverse. What it means? Man? I could not get what you are saying. ISS are, ISS are primers. For right. example, um, ITS primers, we have uh, one forward sequence and reverse sequence. Right. But in ISS are primers, huh? that, that may be a only one sequence. That means what I'm, it means I am asking. No, one sequence means the sequence is one only. Means it may be only one primary. Only, only one. No, but there must be both the primers to then do the amplification, na? Ha, that is that is a different thing. That is a different thing because there, what we do the different uh, like a single primer that binds at different different. Uh, positions, wherever it finds similarity, it will bind at that particular region and you will get a different fragment, different size where it will terminate and the different size like the this type of pattern you will get, right, RAPD and all. Na? So, that is uh, first, first what happens, your fragment is actually divided with the help of some restriction enzyme or something, you will get a different fragment. and wherever your primer is binding, you have these 10 fragments which you got after your restriction, right. Suppose your that primer, one at one fragment it is binding here, 
another fragment it is binding here, another fragment. So, one you will be getting this sequence, another this sequence, another this sequence. So, depending on where your primer is binding on those fragment, that sequence you will get, right. So, it depends where your primer binds, wherever it will find the complementary sequence, it will bind there and whatever region is there beyond that binding site, that it will highlight you in your amplification or your in your gel, the fragment size will be that. Ma'am, since we are talking about primers, so there is a uh, two types of primer, one is non-degenerate non primers and degenerate primers. Right, right. So, everybody knows the definition, but nobody knows the what is the difference between those. Actually, two. what happens? Uh, Degenerate primers are the primers where the particular base, the nucleotide, it can be, uh, there is some nomenclature you all must be aware that for GC we will be putting M, for some other combination we will be putting Y. So, what happens in different type of, let us suppose we are taking uh, 10 isolates, different isolates of a same genus, right. But because the variability is too high, in that particular uh, organism. So, what happens? We give a little like the stringency uh, is little bit uh, like we, uh, we reduce the stringency. Reducing the stringency means if C is present at that particular position, then also it will bind. If G is present at that particular position, then also it will bind. So, what we will do? Uh, instead of A, C, G, T, all this four nucleotide, there are some extra elements, extra alphabets that represent a group of nucleotide, a combination of nucleotide. So, those primers we call as a degenerate primer, where the exact sequence may vary uh, among the isolates. So, we just want to uh, design a common primer for 10 isolate, because if it, if I will put a specific base, let us suppose G. So, in the those isolate where it is G is present, there only it will bind, but what will happen if some C comes or A comes. So, just to take care of all those things, we generate the degenerate primer that if some variability at one or two bases are there, that can be taken care. Generally, this happens in this uh, bacterial identification, this 27 F, 1492 R, then 518. So, these primers are generally degenerate only, because the common region we are picking for designing the primer, but among that consensus region also, there is some variability uh, within the isolate or within the species level, right. Uh, again. Suppose in that primer 3 software, we get two pairs of primer. Right forward 1, reverse 1, forward 2, reverse 2, 2 yeah. pairs we get. Right. So, when we go and check its properties in oligocal, mm -hmm. we are getting a forward primer is okay. There is no self complementary, mm -hmm. there is no hair loop formation, there is no anything damage. Right. And in that pairs, the reverse, prim reverse primer is, reverse primer is showing self complementary. Right. And in pair 2, it is just opposite. Okay. Okay. So, both okay. of them have same uh, melting Haan, you can you can uh, you can pick that also. Okay. It is not that you have to take from particular set. It is not like that. The only thing is that while doing the validation, you have to correctly validate it. Yeah. It is because that that also depends on the region. Uh, suppose uh, uh, there is one part. Uh, I had given that particular sequence. Na. Suppose the one set is in this region, right? Yeah. One set in this region. Another set, because I have specified that it should be from 300 to 400 basis and my total sequence is around 1 kb, right. And if it is making the second set here, then definitely your things will go wrong. Because if I pick this forward and this reverse, now my amplicon size is around 1 kb. Ha, if it is overlapping, then we can, or if it is little bit like 50 basis towards this side or that side, that you can take, right. That depends the region which you have to study. Let us suppose you have to study the uh, middle region of your sequence or the uh, 5 UTR or 3 prime UTR region, that depends on the study. Or let us suppose if you are planning that you are going to read the whole sequence, then anyway you have to 
uh, design the overlapping primers to study the whole sequence and then you can combine all three sequences and then uh, get the whole sequence. Any more queries? Okay then, thank you. But practice this, otherwise you will forget it. <laughs>